Hey everybody, welcome to Agent Pursuit. Thanks so much for tuning in to our show today. We have a very special guest, Denise Staples. Denise, say hi to the people. Hi everyone. And Denise works primarily out of our Cochrane office and is known by absolutely everybody in that community. So we are pretty lucky to have her. She's going to talk about how to become a household name in the communities that you work in, which is not easy to do at all. And you've done such a good job farming with traditional media, new media. You've invented new stuff on your own that has worked. And it is so great that she's here because she's going to share some little nuggets with all of the people who um, aspire, I guess, really, to be that of that common and that recognizable in the areas they work in. So thank you for being here. You're welcome. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And also another shout out, we're just gonna keep building you up here. Okay. <laughs> so Denise has been constantly uh, top one, two, three out of 700 realtors operating in a market, your real, your real estate business, primarily Cochrane. Yeah, right. And uh, I mean, and Cochrane obviously being a lot smaller than Calgary is. What's the population of Cochrane now? Uh, we're just under 30,000. Amazing and has been absolutely killing it. So Denise, again, thank you for the time. We'll just keep on doing an introduction of Denise. Denise, <laughs> well, what that, poor what poor Denise just Denise. Probably, she's probably so, so awkward now. And her, shoes are re and her shoes are real cute today. Um, yeah. look, so good. Okay, well, let's get started. So Denise, talk about your path um, before real estate. Kind of what got you to the point where you, decide, where you got your license? Um, well, actually, when I moved to Cochrane, it was because my husband had a job there. We were in the men's and ladies' wear business in Kindersley, Saskatchewan, and 60 years there, as far as his father and brother and uncle were concerned. Uh, we, the economy kind of went flat in Saskatchewan. We needed to make a move, so my husband thought, let's try a Shell gas station and convenience. So he came in 92, October. January, I followed that fall because I was working for the MLA at the time. And before that, I was primarily a mother raising kids and doing a lot of um, window displays, building props, doing murals, doing um, building logos for different hockey teams, things like that. So like and, the graphics side yeah, and design and World side Youth of Baseball things. did all of their design and decorating for them. We had 14 countries in our little town for a baseball tournament. So I was wow. in charge of that whole thing. So that was my background. Um, and interior design was also my background, but I played with it. I didn't really take it to any serious level. Um, so then we moved to Cochrane. I knew nobody. Uh, we arrived in October of 92, met Richard Yashimura, who was a realtor for Royal Page, fabulous little Japanese man. <laughs> <laughs> He's now passed, but he decided that he needed me to be in real estate, and I said, no, I don't think so. I'm like, that's not me. That's, I don't know anybody. Why would I do that? So in the meantime, everyone's approaching my husband from the Chamber of Commerce to say, come and join the Chamber of Commerce. He said, no, I'll send my wife. <laughs> so, oh, interesting. So I joined the Chamber of Commerce, total boys club, oh, men's club, imagine. whatever you want to call it. All ranchers, farmers, a uh, couple of businessmen. There was no women in it. So I come walking in. I now have been labeled the tourism director for Cochrane. <laughs> and I'm going, like, I know what that's all about. Yeah. So, but any challenge I've given, I take it on. So I thought, okay, I could do this. So I developed the tourism booth and joined the David Thompson tourism branch. And so I kind of went from Calgary to Vulcan to Red Deer and decided that Cochrane needed some visibility. It was yeah. a best kept secret, so let's show it off. So I would go to coffee traders. I would go to Studio West, where they do the, um, the statues, the, um, I can't even think of the name Trophies? of them. No, big ones. The, oh, the Mr. Bag, he does the big yes. ones that you see downtown out of. Uh, okay. Wow. It's a lost, lost wax method is what it's called. Used him, used uh, like whatever business, McKay's ice cream, took my little Aerostar van, loaded up the back. <laughs> <laughs> went to all the venues I could think of, like downtown, Princess Island, uh, Callaway Park, um, any of those places where I could set up a booth and display, this is Cochrane, come on to Cochrane. Wow. That's and awesome. it worked. <laughs> People started coming to Cochrane for ice cream and whatever. So it was just that sort of whole thing. And for about three years, I did that, no pay. But in the meantime, I was getting my real estate license. And that took a year because with Royal Page. 
and with Crab at the time, it was like three months to take a course. Yes. Another three months with Roller Page to take a course. So by the time you're actually selling, it's fall. So that year I made $128. Wow. Not much. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that wasn't the best first year I've heard. No, not the best. <laughs> and I'm still doing all this other stuff, running all over the country. After that, we formed the uh, Rocky View Tourism Partners, and that was exciting because we went to all these different venues and saw how their tourism went. And just, yeah, it was, it was a way to meet all the big boys, I guess, in a way. Yeah. Um, the ranchers and the um, farmers there thought of me at that point in time that I'd live there forever because I really delved into their history delved into their families, Coppathorns, the Buckleys, all those people that have lived there forever, the Zells, you know, yeah. there's everyone, just to kind of find out who they were. And I concentrated on the businesses downtown to support them. Developed with the Western Heritage Center was being established. We did a big conference where um, I brought in all the community, all the business people in to show them and help them educate in how to look after their um, staff, how the staff needs to be treated, how the staff should treat clients coming in to buy something. So that was hugely successful. It was in the old community hall, which is now torn down. But it was um, kind of the way I got started, I guess. Yeah. So within a few years, you probably, well, you probably knew every single person that lived in Cochrane, I bet. Probably I knew, I knew close a lot. to it. I knew a lot just because I was visible and I supported the town. I never shopped anywhere else but the town. All my gifts were from the town so that people would go back to them to buy something so yeah. that they were getting that back and forth within the community rather than without the community. So, And I feel like, you know, for those of you that aren't reading between the lines here and the lessons, people love people that love their areas, love their town. You became an advocate. Um, and everybody to have them rallying behind your cause, all these businesses yeah. um, were probably just like, you know, Thank you, Denise, for supporting and rallying for us. Yeah, they were, uh, they were very supportive of it. I mean, if you look at Coffee Trader's sign, it barely fit in the back of my van. It was huge. It was a big, heavy wood <laughs> sign. Yes. I don't even know how I lifted it, but I did. But it just, you know, it was a way to say, I want to support you, even though I'm with the Chamber of Commerce. I still want to support you. Not even thinking real estate at the time. I was just trying to get through it. Started looking at my own area that I lived in, because I rented for a year before we bought. Yes. When you look at Saskatchewan prices to Cochrane prices, they were quite significantly different, and we're thinking, there's no way that we can buy here. Yes. I'm selling my house for 130, and I'm buying a house that does not look very good for 180, so this doesn't relate. So we rented for a year. But in that period of time, was when I got my license, I thought, you know, I'll start farming my own little area where I lived in. So I would do, um, anytime I did an open house, which I worked with a couple builders, um, help them every weekend doing open houses, um, would do the signage, those little door knockers. Yep. Yep. Open house, such and such a time, did 40 houses around that open house. And once I started getting listings, do the same thing. And when it sold, did the same thing, put the little knockers on, trying to get business. And it worked a little bit, but you know, I'm still new. Yeah. People are still not trusting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who are you? Takes a bit of time. Yeah. And how much knowledge do you have? So then I thought, okay, well, that's one way, so let me start a letter. Well, it's not like email today. You had to figure out this letter, and that was all cut and paste, so you found letters and stuff, and you cut and paste, and then you photocopied it. And oh, like literally cut and paste. Oh, totally. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, like pictures, whatever I wanted on, picture of the house, whatever, I would cut it out and put it on and send this out with stats and what was going on, what new areas were coming on stream and just filling in the neighborhood of what was happening around them. And that started to work. Then I started getting calls to list. And Did you mail those out or door knock and put them in people's? I put them in their doors. You put them in, okay. So you physically yeah. walked. Physically walked. I still physically walk. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. But, With my but, calendars, I do that every oh, year. So you, okay, oh, so, yeah, so Denise, you actually still. Denise actually hands out all of her marketing material on foot. It's good. It's good exercise. But it, I do it um, on the ones that I know I'm not going to mail out. How many yeah. letters would you be delivering? At about 350. And the rest are mailed out. And so, and so we're not talking about, like even the start where you had an open house and you did 40 of these um, door knockers, um, it got you started, and then you did the letters. And at the beginning, when you first started doing the letters, was it about 300? Uh, well, Riverview itself has 200 homes. So. And how would you divide up your, your was it, was it you doing it in a couple of days, or how would you divide that up? 
Uh, usually over the week. Okay. You know, just a couple hours each day, go out and deliver. I mean, you can deliver quite a few blocks in, in a couple hours as yes. long as the weather's nice. So, and then it moved from there to, okay, now we've got computers that work. Boy, I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> so then I could start emailing some of them, uh, and that worked really good. So I could do that client base that I had now started to develop. And it wasn't very big at the time. It was maybe 50. And then it kept growing and growing. It started to grow up to be 2,000. I've cut it back quite a bit because there's a lot that either moved. And that's the reason why I walk and deliver calendars. So I can see if that house has been sold or if it's been changed or how does Clever. it look. Because <laughs> sometimes it's a surprise. Yes. You've been sending out brochures or whatever to a house that looks like it's been beat up badly. And then you're thinking, do I really want that listing anymore? Mm -hmm. You know, who's living in it? So it helps sort of revisit what's, what you have there. And my husband used to like to do that too. He was a real networker. He liked to deliver things and talk to people. And so he helped me a, a lot that way too. So it, it just was a development over time. It wasn't anything that just bloomed. Like I, I was never a realtor that first year that got tons of money. Yeah. I, I slowly built my business, 25% increase each year. That was my goal. Wrote them down, what I wanted to do, how many listings I wanted to have, how many sales I wanted to have, and just did it over a process of time until 2000, and then it blew up. Just that, that, that discipline. What yeah. year did you get licensed then? 93. 93. And started out with that. Now, you, you glazed over something that I want to readdress. And you're like, so I did some open houses because I had some builders. Um, how did you meet those builders? Was it through your time at the chamber or... No, it was through the office. There was a couple of realtors in the office that worked for builders. They needed, they couldn't do all the open houses, so I just saddled up with them. And so you just piggybacked off of Western. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're on brand. Way, way to be. <laughs> yeah. So I just connected with them, and, and I used to do a lot of flower arrangements too, so the builders liked my flower arrangements, so they, I would put them in their houses. And Perfect. So it's oh, not like you landed a big builder contract. No, I didn't want, really want one. Piggybacked on. I did on. work for Bay West a little bit that way, but they tie you down too much. And if you're working, and same with Crawford Ranch, I worked with a smaller builder there too, but they tie you down that you can't really do resale properly. Mm -hmm. So I just would work with them on a basis that I'll do some open houses for you, I'll put you on MLS, and I will still do my resale. What I think I like the most about what you said is, this is so kind of a, a today thing. We have lots of conversations with realtors about different marketing things they should do, and, they're, and they just say, I don't have the money for it. Like I, just, like, I can't afford any of this. But your stories, a lot of the stuff you did wasn't financially, wasn't a big financial investment. No. It was a labor investment. More so, yeah. It was more so, but you found such a good way to say, I don't need to spend $1,000, $2,000 a month on this no. if I just hit the it pavement. Was just a photocopy. And I used the office because it was free. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But, you know, if you're doing it at home, of course, it costs a little bit more to but, have your own supplies. But it still but worked. Still. And then I developed a, uh, I started doing poems. And it was called an evaluation card. And that was direct mailing. And that started going out every month to a different community. That created another sphere of interest where people saw the poems. I would get calls that my mother has a whole photo album book of your poems, loves them. Uh, another one person would come back and say, uh, I've got it on my fridge. You have helped me so much. I was having issues with my children or with my husband or something, and, and the words that you put in the poem were, were so enlightening. And I went, wow, okay. This is a whole other aspect of doing this. But it was an evaluation card. Yeah. And I started picking up listings that way. So, so you, had a lot of different, you had a lot of different funnels. You didn't have, I'm going to do this one thing. You were doing like 10 different things. Yeah. Yeah. And I just seeing I just kept what came throwing through. whatever out would work until I found a niche now where I know what works and that's what I stick with. But I tried everything. So, I even had guys come in and say, you know, you need to be in this magazine. So a couple of them were scammers. I'm so easy. <laughs> 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 and that was like, okay, I better watch what I do there because that was a waste of money. Yeah. When you talk about waste of money, that was one of them. So, yeah, it, you just have to really watch what you do, but be, and watch how it, how it uh, comes back to you. And I'm, I'm not a, you know, ticket taker where I say, okay, I've had this many come back and this come back. I just yes. do it gut feeling. Yeah. And that's. If someone mentions your poems, you're like, oh, okay, noted. That, uh, so that they're made seeing impact. it. So they're seeing it. Yes. And they're reacting to it. And, you know, that means that I may not get their listing, but I may get someone else's listing because they're looking at it, they're keeping it. And I love the, I love the balance between 
art and science. They talk about that in Ninja a little bit where you should have this balance between here's your stats and here's something interesting and useful. Yeah. And most people probably don't know, but Denise is an artist. We have your painting hanging in our house. We do. And it's outstanding. And you're a poet. And yeah, you're a flower it. arranger and a designer. <laughs> and yeah, and didn't know it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But so, so what were some of the, so in terms of advertising, you know, obviously you did the flyers and things like that. Um, what, what are you finding now that, that is working? Because you said you've settled in a little bit. Um, what, it, what are some of the things that you're like, ah, you know, now I'm, um, now I'm going and, and this is, this is something I really enjoy doing and, and I find it being worth a return. Um, well, I've done one thing with a magazine. The problem was it came out of the States. So the cost started to get a little bit ridiculous with the exchange of money, but it was a decorating magazine and I find people like that Yeah. and home design and maybe have a few recipes in. So I used that for a couple of years and it worked really, really well. Um, in fact, I still see it sitting on people's tables when I go in. It would, just, would you mail that out or would you deliver that it? That I would um, either deliver or mail, depending okay. on where it was. Most of them were mailed because right. I would just have them do that. Kind of like what you guys do. I, you send in the names and you mail them out. Yeah. yeah. But it got to be too expensive to do. So, And I, and I liked, really would like to go back to it or something like it if I could find something like it in Canada that worked. But that one I sort of set aside for now. But... I've been in the movie house now for five years. I and love that. It's that, amazing. We used to see you all the time. <laughs> yeah. Five theaters, which works great. Um, and the sad part about it for other realtors is he won't use anyone else but me. Right. Well, <laughs> well, you got, well that, but that's right. You built those yeah. relationships. You, you took a chance. He just right away said, you have ethics, and I like how you do business, and I believe in you, and you're the only one that's going to do it. So I took that as a huge compliment. That is huge. And it, it does work. Um, I, I, Probably the first year I didn't really see anything from it, but now I'm starting to get listings. And when I mention it in my evaluations, they're all excited about it. I let them know when they're going to be on. They're on for a good month, and they rotate back in them later if they haven't sold. And, and just, to kind of, just to kind of clarify that, so your, the commercial that you run is before the movie starts, and it's a bit of promotional just about you, but you also do your listings, yeah. which is so cool for clients because very few people can say, my, li my home yeah, that's for right sale is going to be screen. on. Yeah, they see the room. Right the before the Avengers starts. Yeah. That's Sometimes really it comes unique. on twice, but it's always two at a time that I do. So. And it's, it's as captive as an audience as you yeah. can possibly oh get. Like we're just oh. sitting here, and I remember uh, cause we lived in Cochrane, yeah. um, and it was incredible to yeah, see. Yeah, I used to get, I was in Seattle one time, and I'd get a call from a client my kids, listen to them. They're yelling Auntie Denise. Ah. <laughs> and I went, okay, I'm, now I'm an aunt. This is good. <laughs> and, this and, is good. Yeah. and one of the beauties of it is that it probably synergized your other efforts. People always ask me, and it's like, well, for farming, do bus benches work? And I'm always like, no, they don't. Um, but and they're like, well, does, does, yeah, does the farming, if I do a mail, well, that, that might not work either. And well, does the, does the movie theater work? Well, no. But the combination of all of them, yeah, that's where it's like, thing. yeah, when yeah. you start having these they killers. They still do the local paper. Yep. I mean, I'm still a paper advertiser. And do you do that on a monthly basis? No, weekly. Weekly basis. So okay. I've been doing that since I started in real estate. I, it's just, I'm always been, been there. And, and people you know put, I'm do there. Do you put your, just to kind of spell it out, because they're like, well, what does she put in the paper? So is that just an ad, Denise Staples, your contact information, or you do you couple with couple it with a couple of listings. What All my that listings. Like? Every listing is in there. Every listing in there is in there. Whether it's a week. full page, half page, quarter page, whatever season may be or bring for my listings. Every house is in there every week, no matter what price point they're at. And do your clients love that? Yes. Love that. Yeah. yeah. Now, cool. And so then you, Homes and Land Magazine is another print paper I do. I right. love them because they not only um, have their page, but they fire out to hundreds of links that are associated with the word home. And it's amazing where they go. Plus they have a website and they have some kind of where you can flash your camera, at, your phone at it. Oh, the little, QR code. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So not that terrible. There you go. I knew exactly what you were talking about. It's <laughs> a little flashy here. square. So then I'll get an email or I'll get a text saying that they've looked at the listing. So then you contact them back. I mean, most of them, well, that's uh, the emails actually are, are truer than the text. The text will, oh, I was just looking. Yes. But if you do a price change or if you do, you know, something that's different about the listing, you can text them back and say, this is what happened with this listing. But the emails are stronger. The emails I, I get buyers from. So that's important to me or I get a listing from them. So that and then there's my own website. Um, I don't advertise in Cren. I find too expensive for the quickness of it when I'm doing all this other paper advertising. Yes. 
you know, doing AdWords now, doing social media with uh, as far as Facebook and uh, LinkedIn, but that's about it. I keep it tight. That's a lot. It is a lot, but I keep it but tight. But you keep it tight. You do. Yeah. You totally keep it tight. It's very, it's very focused. It's definitely not sporadic. The messaging is no, one thing over another. This is what's another. working. If something starts to fail, like I just picked up a magazine where they direct mail to certain areas. Yes. I'm still not happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't get out. out of it yet. So I'm just, but then I've, all of a sudden this year I'm getting phone calls on it. So maybe it will work. But I still wasn't happy with the process. So your overall strategy um, hasn't necessarily been like, Here's my master plan. It's like I tried this, I tried this, eliminated that, eliminated that, and now you're left with this bundle of um, bundle of promotion that um, that you feel works. Yes, and, and everyone's different. Everyone goes yeah. at this marketing in a different way. But I think what's important is you have to show your face. Yeah. You have to show you're in business. Totally. If you don't do that, if you just expect someone's going to come knocking on your doors, and I used to tell small business that too because I would sell commercial, sell small business, yeah. and. I said, you can't wait for them to come to your door. You right. have to actually get out and call them in. Like, Don't drag oh, them like this and drag them in like they do at flea markets, but just like yeah. let them know you're there and be there as an, a business owner, not your staff. Yeah. Because your staff isn't going to create what you need to create to know what product to have in that store. If you want to last more than five years, this is what you have to do. Well, three years later, I get a call. They're not, nothing's happening because they didn't do it. But yeah. not that I'm a guru at this, but it's just you can see it. This is every realtor that I've talked to who were struggling. Yeah. It's kind of like, what did <laughs> yeah. you do? What did you do? And it's like, yeah. well, you know, nothing. I got, I got busy. I had to do this. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So you from, just got to get out there. From a face-to-face -face standpoint, I know that's, that's not in here, but you'll be able to answer it. So I'm going to ask anyways. What do you do to make sure that you are connecting face-to-face -face with your database and being kind of out in the community? Is it, are there certain events? Is it Popeyes? Is it every now and then throughout the time of the year? You make sure you stop by. No, um, not really anything outstanding. I, you know, I, I did a lot of charity work with the Lindsay Kimmett. Um, they, their daughter had been killed in a car accident, so they formed this um, group where they raise money every year. We would put on a golf tournament, so it was pretty visible there. And I always donate to it. Um, but I have a lot of charities I donate to, so mm -hmm. that's one way. Um, just the calendar every year, and they actually call me if I. I'm a little bit late getting to them. They call me looking for it or they'll stop at the office looking for one. And so it's a good one. It's a little tent one. Yeah, and it works that great. Is good. Yeah. And they it's beside their computers, beside their phone, they see you every day. Um, the rest of it is just pretty much advertising. And my database, I, like I said, I've cleaned it up now. I'm terrible at Excel. Just doesn't like me. Does not want to operate properly. So I, <laughs> everything's written down. And so I go through it at Christmas time and I pull out what I, you know, someone that didn't add into it, whatever. And I sit down and write their sorry, name and sorry, address using, on it. How do you do that? You're using a pen? Using like a, a pen. <laughs> I write <laughs> their name and address on it because that is the secret to mail outs is written, not typed. Yes. Is written. And how they many of those would you send out? Uh, well, I do like 750, so 350 would be drop-offs and the rest would be mail outs. So those are the ones I sit down and do. They don't take very long to do. And I always do my painting, my Christmas card with it. So my painting goes on it with the calendar. Oh, yes. beautiful. And that's another way to sort of bring attention to me personally as something different. Yeah. So you have so many different things that you do consistently. That's fantastic. What do you do that, what, or what is something that you've done and kind of specifically where you said, this is too much money and it doesn't work. And maybe not the name of a, of a certain publication, but just a general principle or... Well, I mean, paper, the Cran and Calgary Herald. I'm not sorry, I am naming them. Yeah, yeah no, no, um, But those are, I find, very expensive to do in short term. I have tried them. They don't work for me. I think they work in the city more so than they do out in the country. Yeah. And I have, you know, I will do the odd one, but if I'm doing all this other paper advertising, I don't need to do any more than that. I'm staying right. local. And I local and global? Local, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the same idea. Um, but I guess it's just a matter of um, helping people, I guess. If people need help, and I think we all become psychologists at some point in time in real estate. And listening. Listening is a huge thing. And I remember Richard Yashimura used to tell me that. You have to listen. You have to shut your mouth and you have to listen. And he would be just doing this. And I would just <laughs> laugh. <laughs> but saying that, he was the wealth of information. 
So I would sit in my little booth, and he'd be on the phone talking to someone, and I was just writing like crazy. I was just like a sponge. I would just listen to everybody, write things down, make notes. That's how I learned. Or yeah. I would go with them if they were going out to the country on an acreage tour. I would go with them. I just always went with someone just to keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. That's yeah. how it went. And, yeah. I, and everything I attack, I have to make sure I understand it before I go into it because if, I don't want to look stupid. Right. So, mm -hmm. And I may not know a thing, and I'm scared as hell, but I'm going to figure it out. I want to speak just to the print mm -hmm. marketing for a second because we, in a lot of our courses, when a seller asks, oh, am I going to be in this magazine? Um, and then we're showing stats that say, um, less than 2% or less than 1% is of, of homes are found via the print. It's like they always, they usually find the one they're going to buy online. But the stat they don't share as often uh, is that there's like 28% of people that are picking up homes and land, picking up the paper, yeah. and they'll, they'll use it as a research source. So yeah. people are still flipping through these things. You're in a grocery store. That's right. You see these things, and you know, Kirsten would be like that. She's, oh, we're looking for a condo. Oh, there's the condo magazine, and we'll pick totally. it up and, yeah. and take it. And so that's where, um, if anyone's wondering, be like, well, Lindsay, you said that you know, advertising these things don't work. Um, I'm not saying it's going to sell your listing faster, but I'm saying that it's going to put it's your face out there. It's exposure. That's right. And, yeah. and you're going to get that exposure. And then coupled with these other activities, it's, it's great. Well, it's like having your sign up. If That's you don't right. have a sign up, how do they know you're in real estate? That's right. If you're just strictly working with buyers, how are they going to find you? Yeah. What about, um, do you have any, and we don't need to get into specific numbers, but maybe percentages if you know, or maybe you don't know, uh, what percentage of your, your gross revenue would you say you put into um, advertising each year? And if you don't know, that's cool. Uh, I, I'm supposed to know this. I talk to my accountant every year and ask him the question. <laughs> um, I would I would say, oh, probably at least between five and ten percent somewhere in there. So say ten percent yeah. as yeah. a sort of a, a as really overdoing it, but just um, because a lot of it can be done. I mean, the paper advertising obviously is expensive. Yes, um, the movie house is just part of the whole gamut, um, and it's actually cheaper than the paper believe it or not, and it's hitting seven days a week, a lot Love more that. people. But I guess it's, it's probably about 60000 a year is what I spend. Right, right. Okay. Which yeah. is still a lot, Yeah. but you have to, I think. You have to do it. And I oh, keep I... looking for ways to cut back on it, and I'm going, that's not going to work. I need, still need to do this. And I could, so with, like, with the paper right now, I'm squishing the ad down a little bit because... The market's not there right now, so I'm cutting that back by $1,000. I've heard a lot of rules, and, and, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. it seems to be that people are saying if you talk about gross revenue, the 10% is sort of a... Sort of the um, number they use. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. And, and, and so you've sort of naturally fell into that and hit that, and I, I would encourage a lot of realtors to look at it and, and at that. The problem is that lots of realtors just spend too much personally, and therefore all their own individual income, or the, the house, they, the, the car they drive, the house they live in, eats up any type of profit they would have to invest back in their business. Well, that's when you get out and you walk and you drop things off. That's right. And that's where you start. You and make then you make photocopies of things and maybe and this maybe it's just stats in the area and what's happening. And yeah. you have to keep that really simplified because most people are not engineers. So they you need to keep it at a point where they understand it. Maybe it's all about what the new color of the year is. Maybe it's about um, a little yeah. bit about staging. Like, you know, we get those letters through CIR from yeah. Elliot, is it? The preferred client update. Yeah, yeah, those kind of things. It's the same idea as that. That's what I used to do too, but deliver them personally to my area of sphere of interest. And then sometimes I'd mail them out too if I wanted to expand that. If I want to hit different areas so when I'm not just flying all over town, I'm hitting, like when I moved to Cochrane, there was 5,000 people. So it was a little bit tighter area to work in. But if you think in Calgary, if you have a subdivision that has 2,000 people in it, it's the same thing. Yeah. Or 200 people in. It's the same thing. How hard is that to work that? Who is, who is doing your design work these days? Or is it, and you don't need to name a name. I was saying, do you have somebody that does it like a designer that you hire for like the movie house and stuff? Or is the movie house taking care of the design for you? Because I know some of these publications will also do give you some design with it. I have a great son who's you a do, hey? designer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the movie house, um, my son would start it and then he would send it to him and he would sort of massage it and work from there because it's a different type of element that he's working with. And format. Yeah, but he's always done, he does my photography. Nice. Uh, yeah, so in-house. Perfect. <laughs> do, you, do, you yeah. like um, do you still do the door knockers for listings? Uh, no. 
Um, and I've got them a big pile sitting there to it do that. It has been really cold. Yeah. Well, I, I don't really need to because I'm, I've sort of graduated into a referral repeat business. Right. So I'm not soliciting the same way. Um, I just keep up with my clients, buyers. I have a list of them, what they want. I watch the MLS. Uh, when I see something I know that's going to work for them, I send it off to them. We make arrangements to look at it. So I'm constantly navigating my clients as to what I think they want. And if they change that, that's okay. Then we'll just change what I'm... I don't do the, you know, what is that, where you send it out to them the, on the MLS? Uh, oh, um... Mark report. The, like or, the prospects neighborhood. Yeah, yeah where you where say every time a listing comes up, it goes oh, to Oh, the them. auto search. Auto yeah. searching. I tried that for a while. It, it, people could, just didn't like it. So yeah. now I, because things would go to them that didn't even refer to them at all. So I thought, well, that's not going to work. So I'll just have to take that extra time and go through it personally, pick out the ones I know they want. So when something comes up, I'll look at it. Yeah, that's going to work perfect. Boom, we're going to look at it. They're buying it. So... I want to, Some uh, of them take a year. I want to touch on something really that quick here. That is fascinating. Here. That is good service. Well, that's oh, what yeah. it's about. That is. Well, this, that's, that, well, <laughs> I that's, love the that, surprise look in your face. That's you're like, just oh, it, yeah, right? Like, there's so many automated that? things yeah. that you don't have to work for anymore. But that is just taking one extra step. Say, like, you're paying me so that you don't have to take the time to do this. You don't have to look at these 20 houses you're not interested in. I'm going to send you three. You're going to love all three of them. We're only going to look at three of them, and you're going to buy one. Well, I don't take it down that tight. I just say, you know, because some of them, it's only one, and they go, well, yeah, let's go look at it. Great. Yeah. You know, wow. it's not quite right. Okay, what is wrong with it? So what do we need to do next? So then I, so you really define what they're looking for, and then they'll change their mind totally. So it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of getting them in the door, making, showing them that you are servicing them, that you are looking after them, that they're important. And like my father-in-law used to say, don't worry about what you don't have. Worry about what you have. Everything else is a bonus. I think about it. So that's number, how I follow my life. The number one way to get buyers off the fence, in my experience, has been a specific property recommendation. Yeah. It's, it's just, hey, you know, might not have been your search or anything else, but there's this one property I'd love to show you. And people are just like, oh, yeah, I'd love yeah. to. It's getting check their it interest out. back in again because a year is a long time to be working with a client oh, yeah. and they still haven't made a decision. And it's fear. Most of them have fear. Am I going to, maybe that's not the right one. So you have to really start to massage them and really watch what they're thinking, watch how they're reacting to it, and then say, you know, are you really ready to do this? You know, maybe you need to wait another year. Or if you want to do this now, let's really get this going. And they usually will tell you one way or the other. So I also want to go back to something that you said, and you had said that I've now graduated to repeat and referral business. And some realtors brag to me sometimes, and they say, oh, my business is all repeat and referral. And I'm like, well... Hold on a second, because people um, move out of Cochrane or yeah. um, where you are. People die. Uh, people's family members get in the business, uh, and they feel obligated to use them. Like constantly, there's there's this attrition that happens to your database if it's a hundred percent repeat and referral. So while you said I've graduated to repeat and referral, you still mentioned all the number of things that you do that still attracts new business it does, to yeah. overcome that attrition, and yeah. you can never really be, in my opinion, unless you want to see a consistent decline in your business, you can never be in a position where oh, I'm 100% repeat and referral because you need to have these other avenues in order to keep things rolling. Well, right. and even for repeat and referral, I mean, it's a lot easier for somebody to refer you to someone, to a friend who wants to sell their house when you can say, and your home is going to be in the movie theater. Right, like it's just, but but it's just, but it's just really. It's, oh, I got a fan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I just think you're, you're giving people reasons to refer you because a lot of the advertising you do now, because you have so many listings, isn't just about you. A lot of it is listing based, so you're adding so much value to your clients through your advertising, yeah. which is very referable. Well, obviously, the seller wants to see themselves somewhere, right? So, yeah. I mean, we always, I think, with the new wave of uh, of doing the um, digital marketing or whatever they still want to see it. Yeah. So if you're not showing their house off in a newspaper or showing it off on Facebook, then they think you're not doing your job. That's right. They need to see that you're working them. Open houses are one way, but I always find open houses attract buyers, not necessarily sell the seller's home because yep. it's going to be a realtor that's going to sell that home. And we talk about that quite a bit with a listing when I do a listing and a lot of people don't like them anymore they don't like the fact that their privacy has been invaded but I said really you are selling it is one method it doesn't mean it's every weekend for you 
Totally. We'll do it once in a while, but marketing is strong, so this is where you're going to be. Also, you talked about uh, the digital media and, and, and allowing clients to move. And anytime that you give your seller's email address to add works or something else, it should be permission-based. You should let them know that, hey, I want you to be able to see what we're doing online. Right. So can we you know, add in your, your address to this so you see it? Um, but what type, of, what type of advertising are you looking at in the future? Um, you said you've adopted AdWorks. Is there anything else that's kind of on your horizon or just kind of see as it comes? I think where I've sort of slid into is more of that uh, social media marketing. Yeah. I, I still don't think it's 100% the way to go. Like some realtors, that's all they do. Oh, yeah. Uh, and kudos to them if they can make it work. But there is still the old school way of doing business yeah. and always will be. Um, working your database doing the visuals on paper because it's still feel in touch. It's a way of saying, okay, if I do more of Facebook and I do more of LinkedIn, my kids always give me a bad time saying I say it wrong. I used to say LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn. <laughs> Aluminium. So, so after a repeat, don't, don't say that. Then <laughs> I've got it down. So I find that works a little bit, but it's quick, right? And it's gone. Yeah. So how many times are you supposed to show it before somebody says, okay, I'm tired of looking at it? hide the ad, whatever, <laughs> like, yeah. um, but it is still eight to 10 times in the face before someone sees you. So that's where marketing, how I did marketing was just that constant, I've got to expose myself and my listings to these people eight to 10 times or eight to 12 times. Richard Robbins says that. It's true. You know, I did the sweat hogs, they said that, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, you just have to uh, get into it and get to as many conferences as you can because the education there and the networking that's there and the speakers and the motivational stuff that's there is what makes you want to keep going. Sweat hogs. Wow. I, I haven't know. Heard that. I haven't heard that name in a while. That was a so, good one. I even me. won that year. Did you? Sweat hogs. And we got nice. $400 to go to a Chinese place and eat food really? at our table. Yeah. <laughs> I even bought a pig, put it on the table. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that was our emblem. You know, let's do this. Well, wow, and, and I want to touch on the last thing you said, which was conferences and education. Because you are one of the top in the company. You've been doing this for a really long time. Yeah. And you are typically the last person to miss any educational opportunity that you can show up for, which is so great. So to say that you know it all, you know, and you know, maybe even if you did, I think that it's so cool that you will always show up and say, what can I get from this? And the, and the motivation part is really good because sometimes it doesn't matter how much you know, yeah. It's going there and being reminded of the things that you know that you're not doing and maybe sitting across the table from someone who is doing what you know you should be doing, but you stop doing and they have a success story and you're like, ah, right. Like, Yeah, I get lots of, uh, my mind's actually going 100 miles an hour when I'm at these, listening to motivational speakers or listening to anything that might be something I can introduce into my, my business, but sometimes I get home and I don't. It's still in the back of my mind and I still have it written down but then I start to massage it and think, oh, it's not going to quite work, but boy, it was a good idea at the time. Yeah. yeah. And maybe I do take it and take it to the next level. It just excites me that I can get my mind actually moving and illustrating and designing in my brain. I just, I get excited about that. We just had a, an interview with Carl Stater and Carl, who's been at, you know, started CIR in 1985. So he's been in the business for a long time. And we were asking him, you know, what does it take to do well in, in, in a recession or in any, con in any economy. And there's a hundred things he could have said. He only said one, and it was being excited and being positive and yeah. happy to do the job. And that's, that's so it. So for those of you that are watching Carl's interview in, in two <laughs> weeks, you just ruined the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I find if I'm staying at home and I'm like paper bound... And which can happen. I've got too many evaluations yes. to do and I get really sucked into like I'm exhausted just from my brain. I'm, when I finally get in my car and go to that appointment and I sit down with these people, I go, okay, that's why I'm here. This is what excites me. And I love people and I love how they interact back with me. And, you know, we just, we talk about everything but real estate until we get to the point so that, you know, it can be a two hour meeting, but it's a matter of just, sort of relaxing them, I guess, and just seeing who they are and what they're about and, you know, talking about their house and what they did and giving them kudos and stuff, and then sitting down and doing <coughs> real estate. But they energize me, and that's what makes me think about, okay, this is why I still like real estate. When I'm doing paperwork, I get, oh, God, i got to find another job. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? it just, it gets boring. 
and it oh, gets yeah. tedious. So you just have to get out and meet people to realize that this is what it's all about. It's servicing and getting to know people. And like I said before, the psychological part of it is huge. Like there's a lot of people that have issues. And Denise loves yes. traveling. And I do, yeah. You have uh, taken advantage of the leading real estate companies of the world, has their global symposium uh, each year, and you have been a consistent attendee uh, to flying over and, and doing some of their, their global. I shouldn't say consistent, but you've been um, yeah. quite a few years, and yeah. um, it's amazing because I was like, oh, Denise is going to, uh, you know, <laughs> Greece Berlin. or <laughs> Berlin or wherever it is. It's like, that's, a, that's outstanding because well, I've only been to one of them and it, and it was incredible. Well, I, I mean, traveling alone is fearful, um, but I thought, you know, I, I'm not going to just sit here and wait for someone to show up and travel with me because my husband's been gone since 2006. So it's, it's like I need to do something with my life. I need to change my life. I've had been Ponzi'd. I've been, you know, wow. tragic death of my husband. A lot of things that happened over the last 13 years ago that really changed who I was. And I thought, even my business changed. Everything that I attacked became in a survival situation that I've got to do this in order to be at this point in my life. I can't just sit here and wait for somebody to feel sorry for me. So I need to attack. I need to travel. I need to keep broadening my horizons. So what so better good. way than to go to a conference? Yeah. <laughs> and I've met so many great people. I have interactions all over the world now with people and they Facebook me or they whatever and a I lot of them are coming response. to Athens in September it's gonna be like a family reunion it's gonna be great <laughs> you know it's awesome so like, incredible and it's it's you get to see the city and they put on such a great conference it's I mean I was with um, uh, what were they called gosh it was Saddlebrook Homes but it was part of the Homes and Land uh, magazine or house and house and home magazine that was in the States and they, GMAC Real Estate, yeah. they were in Canada, the United yeah, States, yeah, yeah. their conferences were huge. I mean, unbelievable. Yeah. And I, so I would travel over the United States, taking in those conferences, yeah. and they brought in big points. Even McCain was there one time giving a speech. And nice. Just people that were unbelievable with their stories and the connections that you made just there. And in fact, Mr. Boomsma is was their marketing agent, and he's now what, CEO? Yeah, CEO of Luxury. Of Luxury. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. So I, I thought, I know that guy. <laughs> all of Luxury now. Yeah. And Stephanie Anton took over yeah. Luxury. Yeah, So it was, it was just all that that started to connect the dots, and I thought, I got to do this, because I know what he can do. Yeah. And how he can put on a show, and how he can bring speakers in, and that's what kind of accelerated that whole thing, and it's great. I, I just Thanks, love that attitude of, um, you were never handed anything. No, nope, uh, It's like you created all these opportunities. And even in your life now where... Even the words, I have to attack. Yeah. It's like default aggressive. Oh, I like love that. Like you just, just got to go out and you say, I got to create this. Like no one's going to no one's gonna give it to me. And I'm I never have. have I've never had anyone give anything to me. And I never wanted anybody to give anything to yeah. me. I'm one of these people that needs to do it myself, needs to figure it out, needs to put it together. I pat on the back that I did it, that it worked out you know, slug in the tummy, it didn't. <laughs> like, yeah. And I've been punched a lot, you know, figuratively yeah. in the stomach. But, okay, another learning lesson. What did I do wrong? How did I, why did that happen? Okay, brush it off, move on. Oh, we're going to have to yeah. end take this because notes. I'm starting to feel really bad about myself. I can't take, <laughs> <laughs> I can't take too much more on Denise. <laughs> All right, so Denise, let's, <laughs> let's, so let's ask one more question. Let's ask one more question here. What advice would you give someone today looking to take their business from average to great? Well, I think that's the problem. <laughs> just stay average. Don't worry about great. Yeah. Great will come if it's meant to be. Just do your business. Stay focused. Stay knowledgeable. Stay interested. Listen. Sponge. Become a sponge. Do your marketing. And don't be afraid of it. And don't be afraid of standing up to people. I mean, it's what it is. And yeah. they're going to say no. Yeah. And they're going to say yes. Probably more than no. Just be there and be in the moment. This is your career. It's not a job. And if you're taking this career to another level, let it happen. Do your goals. If you want to make 50% more next year, what is that going to be? How are you going to do that? Set that up. If you don't write your goals down, and I do it in November, so that I'm starting right away in January. If yep. I do it in December, then it's like February, March before it starts. Yep. So you always have to be three months ahead of the game. And when you do that, you'll find that by writing things down and check back in six months to see if that's actually happening. Why isn't it happening? What can I do again? Maybe I set it back a little bit. Maybe I've been just a little bit too much 
greed. <laughs> I need to pull it back a bit. And that's how you do it. And you just keep doing it. And maybe you will be really successful. Maybe you won't be. But you have money coming in to support you, to pay the rent, whatever it is that you need to do. And, and that's what life is about. I'm inspired. Thank legitimately. you. Legitimately. <laughs> Legitimately. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a, a book of what you should or shouldn't do. It's just about life and how you... Yeah. And go get it. it. Like you just, go. just you go have get to it. Go Put get yourself it. out there and go get it. You have like to. eight to ten times people see you. Like that's been a marketing. It's kind of a forever. tough it's one because marketing that many times to people is is a time consuming thing. Mm-hmm. We've hit from all different mediums. Oh yeah. my like gosh. They, they, yeah. They, well, I even think of our CR oh. marketing strategy, and you know, we just did one. Me and one of my staff members did this a few months ago, and we wrote down it was just over forty. I don't remember. It was forty one or forty two, but different places that corporately we're trying to get our brand to touch people. And, 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 and part of this was, this is way too much work. Like, where are we going to cut back? But when you put down the different demographics and what you're trying to achieve with all of these different places, that's the only way, like, you're eight to ten times, like, you got to work at it. Oh, right? yeah. Like, it is yeah. not, that is not seven an Seven day a week. It's that not, is a seven day a week yeah. job. 12, 14 hours. Sigh in the paper, sigh in the And you still have to keep your health. You still have to keep your health. You still have to keep your family in yeah. mind. Uh, you know, I have grandkids now, so if I need to, if they call and say, can you babysit? Okay, I'm rearranging my schedule. I'm going to be there. That's important to me. Taking that one holiday, maybe not the greatest type of holiday going on a conference, but still a holiday. It's away from business. I'm nine hours away. I don't have to be on the phone because I'm in Vancouver. And I'll take the odd weekend. Yeah. I'm not a big, like, I got to do a month away or two weeks away. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day, but not yet. Um, I, I just like creating, I like living in my house. I like living in my yard. I like, I like living in my town. I don't need to be everywhere yeah. to get away. I can like shut myself off in the morning. And you have just, nothing to escape from. It's, I can escape in my I little house it. and sit out on my it. deck with a glass of wine or a coffee. And my mornings are my mornings. And I do my real estate then. I do it slowly. And then in the afternoon I'm out. And in the evening I do some. So it's just a matter of I need two hours in the morning to put it together. Get my brain opened up. <laughs> Yeah. Read my emails, have my coffee, and then I'm off. Yeah, that's how I do it. Whether it's meditation, I used to do yoga and all that stuff too. But yeah, but I got, yoga's I got lazy. Hard. <laughs> yoga's hard, man. Yoga's hard. Yeah, it is hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. And running, you know, I did everything. You know, I I golf still, but after a while, you just think, well, okay, I'll I'll just get that. <laughs> <laughs> I got tired of, tired of awesome, trying yeah. that part of it. <laughs> so if I sounds like the end of my running career. It's like, it's like okay, yeah, you, know what, this is just, you hit an age where it's just yeah. like, I, I don't really need all this. <laughs> Do I even like it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Denise, thank you so yeah. much for being with us and sharing all of this. You are, I don't want to say you're, you're, you're busy. I don't like the word busy, but your time is really valuable. Yeah. So to share it with us today and drive into the big old city to be with us is pretty cool. So yeah. appreciate it. Thank uh, everybody, you. thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you will be able to find this content if you want to find it at a later date at agentpursuit.com. We share all of our videos on our Instagram and Facebook page as well, so follow us there, and you can see what we have coming down in the pipes. So thanks very much, and uh, thanks, Denise. Thank you. Thanks, Denise.